the YouTube world. Um, I'm going to talk about something that's within the mental health sphere of stuff. This will potentially contain triggering material, child abandonment, eating disorders, everything in that circle. Um, ha having been raised by a narcissistic father, that's my adoptive father, and some domestic violence and everything in that general circle of domestic violence. So if that is something you are sensitive to or might cause a panic attack or anxiety attack, I understand. Just, you know, you can watch my other videos. You can go to like a nice chill lo-fi thing. I get it. I just want to give that, you know, little thing before I really get into what I'm about to talk about. Also, this is completely non-scripted. The only thing that's normally scripted in my videos are my audio essays, which, you know, I have a playlist full of that where I talk about a bunch of different topics that, you know, pop into my mind, some horror stuff, video games, my thoughts on philosophy on different matters, that that whole schmeal, it's, it's a big thing. So with those disclaimers out of the way, let's get into this. So I don't think I've ever been completely forward about one specific diagnosis I have. And that is partial DID, so partial dissociative identity disorder. The reason why I haven't really spoken about it much is um, I've seen system talk on TikTok and similar, and it's honestly a train wreck, drama wreck. I try to avoid Kiwi Farms attention and that kind of thing. Um, and before people immediately click away from this video and try to deep dive my videos on, oh, are you faking, blah, 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 I'm, <laughs> I've had this YouTube channel for over 15 years. I was not aware that I was a system on the conscience level as me, the host, Mora, until I'd say maybe five or six years ago. And, um, so there's that on top of the fact, again, you know, I've seen a lot of the drama involving system anything on social media so again I try to avoid that but again especially with partial DID it is a very very misunderstood diagnosis so I really felt compelled to make this so looking at the history with myself looking back you know thinking back on my life because you know retrospect is 2020 I'm all just like oh my god everything makes so much sense now I was abandoned a few days after I was born Put it in an orphanage until I was about six, nine months of age, if I remember right. And the family that I was adopted into, um, they were very emotionally superficial. Like they say, I love you. But it's one of those, you're saying that because society tells you to say it. Or it's not that genuine, you know, non-judgmental love care that a parent should have for their child. Um, as I got older, my relationship with my adoptive parents gradually got more and more rocky. I don't even know if my birth parents are alive or dead. I've been looking for them my entire life, but this is just going to be in reference to my adoptive parents because that's all I've known in regards to that. My older brother, who was my adoptive parents' biological child, scared the living hell out of me every single day of my life to the point where I was sometimes shaking in my bed. That's how, you know, scared I was of him. To my conscience knowledge knowledge he never essayed me but he did you know I don't even know how to classify this one little section here my dad jokingly said beat down where you know kids like to get rowdy and playfully punch each other and they called that beat down session and you know looking back on it as you know as a 30 year old adult I'm like why did y'all encourage this? Because, you know, this was the 90s, early 2000s. And just, I remember one time specifically, you know, we were growing up. And um, again, he's 11 years older than me. So there's just that insane power dynamic issue that naturally happens with siblings that far apart in age. We were, we recently moved to a new house and he knew I was scared of a, like this weird Halloween mask or something he did. And he purposely like would like hide behind boxes and jump out and try to purposely scare me like so many days throughout the entire day. And every single time I tried to tell my parents, they basically metaphorically just slap, stop that. So needless to say, I never had a good relationship with my older brother. I do not want to have a good relationship with my older brother. I am numb to that. 
And, you know, through the variety of therapists and everything, you know, where I've explained my childhood, my in-depth, you know, psycho pure psychological fear relating to my brother, on top of the fact of just my parents emotionally just not genuinely being there and supporting me as a genuine loving parental relationship should be other people who come from emotionally negligent and or abusive family homes understand that on a very deep uncomfortable level of um you don't feel that genuine connection to your parent caregiver like you should with other families where the children feel very securely happily attached it's like a feral cat. You want that love, but you're scared because of your growing up circumstances. So I absolutely contribute that to a huge reason as to why my DID formed. Fast forward to middle school. Um, I was basically the new kid in school every three or four years because my dad's job happened to change locations a lot. He was a sales consultant for a company. And because of that, when the company said, hey, we need you here, we got up and moved. So again, three or four years. And you know, middle school and high school kids can be vicious, especially fellow girls. And um, I was horrifically bullied. Like, I was never physically assaulted in school, but they were constantly picking, 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 picking. And it got to the point, I remember one time... I have this distinct memory of I was on, you know, riding the bus home and I was just, I was in a bad mood for whatever reason. So I put my headphones on in the back of the bus and for whatever reason, the regular people that bullied me decided to pick on me that day and I snapped. What happened was I shot up, I grabbed the girl's throat, you know, right like this. I shoved her against the wall and I said, you fucking even look at me the wrong way and I will send you through this window. And, you know, she had her two little posse girls just staring at me completely horrified. Like, oh my God, she might actually hurt her. <laughs> and this was the back of the bus with a lot of kids still on the bus. So, of course, the bus driver didn't see it. And she never bu bugged me again. But, you know, it's just, it's stuff like that with the constant harassment, abuse, bullying, and just oh, you're different, so I'm going to make fun of you mentality absolutely compounded the DID. And then came the age when I started getting into romantic relationships. And unfortunately, the reality is most of my romantic relationships, sorry, I'm, I think I'm in the middle of getting over a cold, have been abusive in some shape or form. Like, my boyfriend before my current boyfriend, he ticked every single box. And... Like, narcissism, being the victim of those behaviors, sucks. As I said earlier, my father, he was, I wouldn't say full-blown narcissistic personality disorder, but he definitely had strong narcissistic traits. He saw everything as a malevolent competition. It was me against them, and I had to be the one on top. I had, the, had to be the one to look good. Don't you dare embarrass me in public. Don't you do anything that I would perceive as a fault against me as a parent, fault against me as a person, that kind of thing. It was horrific growing up in that kind of environment. And my brother, their, you know, biological child got some of those traits. Case in point, one distinct memory I have is I think I was early 20s, if I remember right. And, you know, I was in the middle of trying to figure out who I am queer-wise. And, you know, I know I'm queer. It's just, you know, what label specifically you all know what I'm talking about with how that can be a little bit difficult sometimes. And apparently before the lunch, I made a post about pansexuality or something. Now, this is when pansexual was in its baby days of, you know, budding. And, um, like I said, I made a post something about that. And the following day, we happened to have lunch with him. And I can't remember if it was, like, girlfriend, fiance, wife at the time. Whatever. And, um, so we're having lunch. And, like, at this lunch, I'm making a point to sit as far away from him as possible. Focus on eating my food. Do not look at him. Do not touch him. Do not ask him for anything. Nothing. Just stay out of his bubble. Try to stay away from that crap. Because, you know... That's how I had trained myself up to that point to not, you know, get hurt. So, <clears throat> out of the blue, he just drops, Why are you posting about all this queer LGBT pansexual stuff at the table? 
and it's like a hush fell over the crowd and everyone was just kind of awkwardly looking at each other and at this point I'm just staring at my plate like did he really just say that did he just out me to the entire family at this table I get up excuse myself go to the bathroom to collect myself make sure you know I'm not a sobbing mess and then you know I go back to the dinner at this point everyone has pretty much finished their meal we're just waiting on the check everyone is kind of awkwardly looking at each other because my family was very queer phobic growing up at the same time can they understood the gravity of what he did because you know that's just not something you do to people just spill out a sensitive thing like that and after the dinner you know my dad pulls me aside and he's like i have no idea what the heck that is where that came from but um i he like he was fumbling and i'm all just like keep him away from me and we'll be okay <laughs> and then you know just so much bullshit with that with my family so much bullshit with romantic relationships and like i said looking back on it it is so evident of how and why the did formed Aside from that, I do, you know, I am formally diagnosed with PTSD and CPTSD. On top of the fact, um, like, my boyfriend now is well aware of my system. My previous boyfriend did not. I was not open with him about it. Because I was very worried that he would legitimately try to get me put into a mental institution. He was that kind of nutty off the wall. And... You know, before I was aware I was a system, my ex would say things like, oh my god, it's like you're a completely different person sometimes. And, you know, with whenever I learned I was a system, I'm just sitting there blank face thinking to myself, yeah, I actually have ten people in my head. In regards to further information about my system, I have emotional amnesia, but not physical memory amnesia. So what is emotional amnesia? Emotional amnesia is I get feelings that I know as the host are not mine. I'll, if I feel someone else fronting, you know, they'll front, they'll do their thing. And then me as the host, Mora, comes back out. And... They will experience emotional things that I do not either physically remember or it just feels so foreign, so detached from myself that I'm, I'm just like, what the hell happened? Why did that happen? And I think one of the most prominent symptoms of my specific system, because, you know, everyone's a little bit different, is when one of my alters get very emotionally upset, sad, angry, any kind of intense emotion, lust, happy, whatever... There's kind of a bleed over effect. It's kind of like, you know, if you fill up a cup of water and the water, you know, gets to the top of the cup and it starts spilling over the sides. That's the best metaphor analogy I can come up with for that. Like, I remember one time, one of my alters specifically, I'm not going to name names because, again, some parts I do want to keep relatively private in regards to specific identities. So I'm going to keep it relatively vague. Because, again, I don't want the Kiwi Farm crowd coming down on me. Um, She just felt such intense sadness that I wanted to sob. I wanted to cry. And I'm like, these are not my emotions. These are her emotions. But they are so strong, so upset, so frustrated that I want to cry. And, you know, my boyfriend, my current boyfriend, I think I was video calling him at the time. And he was like, babe, why do you look so sad all of a sudden? And I'm like, I'm sorry, my system is kind of haywire right now. And, you know, as I learned that I was a system, I did things to better incorporate and encourage connection. I don't want to say integrate because the end goal for us is not integration. I accept the fact that, you know, I am a system. I love my system because they form to protect me, to keep me safe, to be there for me. And they have helped me survive so much in my life. And I am genuinely appreciative of that with them. <clears throat> but yeah, like I said... I've done a lot of mental exercises to try to encourage everyone to be open with each other. It's almost like a roundtable relationship where, you know, everyone comes to a kitchen table and we talk about, you know, what's going on, how are we feeling, is there something upsetting us, etc. And yes, some of my alters are more standoffish than others, but 
it can be a real challenge. And um, again, looking back on my life, considering how much I've jumped around with like LGBT identities, when am I with gender, when am I with sexual orientation, etc. I can see why it was so confusing for me. Because all of my 10 alters, more or less, have very distinct gender identities sexual orientations how do they how do they perceive romance how do they perceive sensuality how do they perceive rolling around in the sheets with someone and that is why i have struggled so much to figure out what i am in that regard because before i was aware i was a system everything was just a jumbly old mess and i'm like what is happening <laughs> but um like moving forward I'm not going to put, you know, in a corner or whatever who is fronting because unless it's relevant towards the video, I don't see it as relevant. Again, I don't have full-blown physical amnesia. It's mostly emotional amnesia. But it's not that, you know, I want to keep this secret from my viewers because I love you guys. I appreciate that, you know, you're sticking with me and hanging around with me. At the same time, you know, even as someone who makes, like, vlogs about my health and everything, you know, I deserve some sense of privacy. And for that, my way of doing that with my system is not being specific as to who's fronting. If I tell stories about them, I'm not telling, you know, oh, this did this did this and then that to them. And I'm like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get involved with that jumbly mess. I don't want fan art of my system. I don't want all the publicity that comes with it but I do want to be forward with you guys that yes I have this because it is a serious condition it is very misunderstood even within you know system social circles there's a lot of infighting of what constitutes as what do you do you have enough trauma to have this and like with me specifically considering mine was mostly brought on by childhood abandonment and then being adopted into a very emotionally and psycholog psychologically negligent in regards to overall wellness and well-being family I have been told many times that you aren't traumatized enough for it and I'm like that is bullshit child negligence absolutely quantifies you for this on top of the fact just dealing with everything it is so so tough and bless my current boyfriend's heart because he loves me he accepts me and understands the fact that, you know, sometimes people in my system are not okay. And he is the only person in my life that has permission to be like, hey, can I talk to such and such? And if I'm feeling okay with it, I'll say yes. I'll, I'll encourage them to come forward. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Most of the time they do because, you know, they like him. Most of the people in my system like him and or are genuinely attracted to him it's it's funny because you know we are both polyamorous but with me having 10 people in my head he literally gets to date multiple people at once with me because of that and also on a side note I'm pretty sure I got a fragment in there but again I'm, I'm still investigating but I know that this video is kind of rambling and kind of long but I just feel like Especially partial DID, because that's almost never spoken about in system circles. We need more people to be forward about them having it, the reality of living with it, and how to deal with it. It is it is a mental health disorder, because it does cause me distress in a lot of living situations. But it's not like, oh my god, I'm in agony 24-7, like some of the naysayers want to say, you know, they have. It's almost like I'm, it's not that I'm in malicious distress, rather I'm numb. I am numb to so many things and I hate it. When I want to, you know, get busy with my partner, it can be tough sometimes because, you know, I dissociate a lot and I'm trying so hard to stay present and stay conscious, but it is so difficult if we're just, you know, hanging out on the couch, if we're rolling around in the sheets, etc. So... If y'all have anything you want to ask or, you know, want me to address, you know, something more about my history, being a di being a diagnosed system, etc., let me know. I'm more than happy to answer as much as I can, as well as respecting my privacy in regards to that. Because like I said, I'm not going to be specific about alter names. I'm not going to be specific, 
you know, who did what to whom in my headspace, that's, that's not relevant, as well as giving my system the proper privacy. But I did want to come forward about that. This channel is probably not going to be a, you know, system talk or, you know, system channel from now on. It's still probably going to be just a general vlog about what's going on in my daily life, my medical condi conditions, as well as audio essays about stuff I just find interesting. Maybe some drawing stuff that I do, but it's it's not going to be a complete system thing. So yeah, um, let me know if you guys are interested in learning more about this, and I'll, I'll do what I can. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being patient and listening to this 20-minute thing. Thank you.